okay so next uh, or the last is the weaning of tracheostomy how do we wean a patient of tracheostomy so uh, it is very very important uh, okay the patient is ready we have taken them, them off ventilation the patient's uh, uh, abg is good uh, it is very stable it has not been fluctuating for uh, uh, more than 48 hours uh, there is absence of distress the patient is uh, stable off ventilation uh, hemo hemodynamically stable Uh, the carbon dioxide is not increasing they are able to wash off their carbon dioxide they are more cooperative adequate um, they are able to communicate uh, they are uh, uh, swallowing is better they are more confident okay they are slowly uh, they will be weaned off tracheostomy which is called the tracheostomy progression so there are three d's one is deflation when we deflate the cuff and uh, the the tube will be in situ it will be fixed as usual but the cuff will be deflated Uh, after a thorough oral suction or a subglottic suction so uh, this cuff will be kept deflated for at least 24 hours uh, we need to monitor the saturation respiratory rate any distress uh, so if the patient tolerates uh, deflation uh, cuff deflation then we go in and do a, a thumb occlusion and make sure that the patient is able to breathe when the tracheostomy tube is blocked with a cuff deflated okay so uh, when the thumb occlusion test doesn't go well if the patient is not able to tolerate then we do something called a downsizing we can try that uh, like if the patient is having a eight tube and there is very less uh, space around the uh, tube which uh, sits in the trachea so we can use a six size tube so that the tube is also there uh, with a cuff deflated and there can be more air passage uh, around the tube into the glottis and the patient is able to breathe and talk very well if the thumb, the thumb occlusion is goes on well with that tube then we cap it so the tracheostomy tube is capped kept in situ for 24 to 48 hours if the patient does very well it is like the tube is there but the patient is getting used without the tube's uh, aid any time if there is a situation when there is an emergency or the patient is distressed the tube uh, the cap can be immediately taken off and suction done and even cuff inflation can be done we can talk about troubleshooting a little later so this is how we slowly wean off the patient and once the patient is ready uh, tolerating uh, capping for 24 to 48 hours then what we do is we take off the tracheostomy tube and put a good dressing so that uh, and uh, uh, the patient is monitored for another 24 hours uh, with a airway trolley nearby so when the patient is able to obey commands they are able to cough and clear the secretion very stable the chest x ray looks really good and they are tolerated the cuff deflation and they are speak, uh, uh, tolerating speaking well and even thumb occlusion and capping they are ready for decannulation okay so we just assess the airway again make sure the swallowing is okay the patient doesn't have any distress okay the patient is block uh, bl uh, the tracheostomy tube is blocked for some time Uh, they are tolerating it continuously strict monitoring is necessary but they are tolerating it okay so if the patient comes to that level then that is very good and uh, the trachea is decannulated tube comes off and uh, air tight air tight firm dressing goes on the trachea to close the opening close the stoma basically so that can be a feeling of decannulation when like it can be due to a lot of factors what should we think or what should be uh, um address when uh, the patient is not tolerating uh, tracheostomy progression that means that uh, it is not only decannulation from the tracheal de uh, cuff deflation till the capping if there is a lot of uh, issues we need to address each of the following we need to make sure uh, the condition which necessitated the tracheostomy uh, is uh, sorted out one second thing is that there can be tracheal wall dislocation there can be weakness of the tracheal wall causing occlusion when the patient uh, breathes uh, with a uh, negative force we all breathe with a negative uh, pressure so that causes the collapse of tracheal wall because of uh, weakness there can be granulation tissue around the stoma which can make uh, the trachea uh, tracheal wall uh, uh, tracheal space narrow so there can be tracheal mucosal edema these all make the trachea narrow so that the patient doesn't feel um, uh, the uh, air going in it they might feel little suffocated Uh, so there can be subglottic stenosis there can be weakness of trachea there can be uh, uh, laryngeal opening uh, reflex incoordination so the patient will need a lot of uh, ent and a team work ent and um, uh, intensivist and speech therapist to sit with them and encourage them and sort out all these issues